to transform a community, uh, you have to have things that everyone can enjoy. And a trail is just that. It is something everyone can use and benefit in their own way. What we call a community environment, that it helps people know that there are, are ways for them to be connected to the, um, to the parks and to the trails. And that to me is, a, is part of what people are looking for when they talk about uh, quality of life. The overall goal is to bring more people to our region's greatest natural asset, which is Lake Erie, and open up the awareness and access to this incredible asset that we have here. The greater connection of our waterfront trail to other trails really will bring Euclid new visitors, new energy, and new sense of pride from our residents. Uh, we're really hopeful that we see, continue to see what's already started with new investment in new housing, with recreational activities, and really just of rejuvenation of a city. We are the lakefront city and it is gorgeous. And so when I think about the limitless possibilities, restaurants, pop-up shops, vendors, street performers, that's my vision for this area here. I just want to see families getting out and getting together, spending time together and enjoying this great Mother Earth that we have for as long as we're gonna have it. As we started reconfiguring our attention and communities to the, to the rivers as assets and trails that went alongside those assets, we recognize that these become sort of like veins and arteries in the community. People get from one place to the other. They also get their relaxation, uh, get their exercise. They meet their friends. It's a gathering place. Cycling is a sense of community. And so you, you have a nod of the head or wave the hand or meeting up with the people in the community, the neighbors and patronizing their businesses. And to be quite frank, exposing people in some neighborhoods who may have not seen African-Americans cycling. Um, as a matter of fact, we had a road ride the other day and it was like, yay, black people cycling. Uh, so, yeah, we do cycle. <laughs> Our business is all about community. It, it's, it's all about community building. It's about you know sharing our passion for running, riding, just life. And on that, when we ride through Homewood or an African-American neighborhood, and we're ringing our bells, people are hollering at us and waving at us. So I think when they see us and then they see the healthy ride bikes, maybe that'll push them to say, I want to ride a bike. So I'm a complete community development nerd, and that video was a lot of fun for me to, to watch. I'm Kent Spellman. Uh, I've been working as a consultant for the Rails to Trails Conservancy, mostly in Northern West Virginia, uh, closing gaps in rail trails and helping communities take advantage of the rail trail assets that they have. Uh, with me is Amanda Pitzer, who is the executive director of the Friends of the Cheat. Friends of the Cheat is also the driver behind the Mountaineer Trail Network Re Recreation Authority, which is being formed. And Kim Harris, who is the project manager and outdoor recreation specialist for the Oil Region Alliance. As I watch that, I realize that really the greatest tool we have for economic development is successful community development. I loved what Mary Hunt said about trails being the veins and arteries of our communities. Uh, so what we're trying to do with trails is help create communities that offer outdoor recreation amenities, that welcome diversity, and that support small businesses. I've been working on rail trails since 1988. That'll tell you something right there. But um, what I've learned over those more than 30 years is this. I love trails, but I can tell you it's not about the trail. It's about what the trail can do for your community. So with that, I wanna sort of turn it over to Amanda and let her talk a little bit about what she thinks um, her organization is doing in terms of looking at trail town capacity and why that's an investment they're trying to make. Thanks, Kent. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that I grew up on Lake Erie. I, I grew up in Erie. So watching the videos have been really great and great to see all the wonderful work happening up there. Um, but now I'm a river rat. As Kent mentioned, I, I work for an organization that is place-based and uh, we have spent many years uh, working to, to keep our water quality uh, good and clean. And now we have people flocking back to the river and uh, in addition, our trails and, and working to build 
uh, trail amenities around the river. And it has been maybe different than some of the processes that other folks go, go through where maybe the trails happen first. Um, you know, the river was here and we ended up here. And as a result of that, we have uh, really worked to build community around that vein, around that artery that flows through um, our towns, through our, through our backyards. And in turn, now we're looking to couple trail development with that, not only in our region, but across uh, the 15 county uh, region here in, in uh, Northern West Virginia. Um, and as Kent said, it's not about the trails. You know, I, I tell folks a lot, we're not building a trail in the woods thinking it's going to change the community. Um, we're building the community and that's what's going to change things are the individuals that are going to use that trail and engage with that trail and uh, build their lives around it. Thanks, Amanda. Kim, talk to me a little bit about what your work involves in terms of connecting trail development with the community work that you're doing in your region. Sure. Um, well, our trails in the region, for the most part, are part of the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail, which is part of the Industrial Heartland Trail Coalition. Um, so the Oil Reach Alliance um, that I work for, we administer the Oil Region National Heritage Area. Um, and with that, what we've seen, like Amanda, our river was always there. We had the rail corridors are in, um, that would haul the oils and such out of our region, but that all went away. Went away. Um, some people would say that wasn't good, but some of us that like the outdoors natures would beg to differ with that. It gave us the opportunity. So it was um, back in 2013 or 20, that's what's 1998, was the first trail that was actually laid within the region. Um, and from that, um, a vision to do a wider connection outside our region was um, developed. But to maintain and take care of these trails, it takes a community. So the communities are adopting the trails and they're helping our trail groups by just being out there and monitoring to make sure everything's okay, taking care of trees that are down. I mean, things happen um, and we'll get a report, there's a tree down and before someone can get out there, it, it's taken care of because the community has embraced that. Um, the Oil Region Alliance to help spur on a lot of that, um, probably about eight years ago, we kicked off a um, trail contest, a business contest, and it's for new businesses wanting to get started or it's to help a business who's already there, but maybe they want to expand to help on the businesses. Um, so we operate that each year and we're finding just some really new and unique ideas are starting to flourish out of that, but it is connecting the trails and that to the communities. The commu if the communities aren't there, there's no reason to have these trails. Absolutely I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really the, the most important point is that the connection between trails and communities doesn't happen by itself. It has right. to be done intentionally. The community has to be engaged and the community has to really try to put itself on the trail in one way or another through signage or through access.